Hello YouTubers, Happy New Year, Reloading Bench, back with you once again. And although this is not going to be the first video I've published in 2023, this will be, however, the first video I'm actually making in 2023. I took a little hiatus over the uh, holiday season, so I published some older stuff that I had ready, uh, ready to go, and that's what you've been seeing for the last... Uh, couple days or so week week two weeks so um we are going to today talk about brass handling and the whole reason i'm making this video is because i watched another uh, youtuber somebody who is new to reloading and it was just very interesting to watch part of his uh his learning process and one of the videos that i watched and enjoyed was his brass I'll call it his brass system his brass handling system and then I got to thinking wow how lazy I've gotten over the years because uh, you could feel his enthusiasm and maybe you don't hear or feel enthusiasm in my videos but uh, as a new reloader you could just feel the enthusiasm that uh, that 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 he was sharing in terms of the excitement around his newfound hobby and diving into it and uh, getting uh, into the intricacies of what it takes to begin reloading and it was uh, it was just enjoyable to see because it brought back a lot of memories and that's why I started to feel a little bit guilty and I thought all right let let me talk about how I handle brass because we're going to call this uh, the uh, the lazy reloader in terms of brass so. Whatever I'm shooting, whatever I load and then shoot, I'll pick up at the range. And then my range bag full of brass that I accumulate at the range. I'll come home, I'll grab a bin, and for those of you who don't know, I am a bin fan. Love bins. Can't have enough bins. Big bins, little bins, black bins, red bins, all blue bins, all kind of bins. And then I'll dump. I'll dump. And then I'll sort. And then the stuff that, uh, you know, I would never use, I will throw away. Or calibers I don't particularly shoot, I'll throw away. And uh, that's that. Uh, and then from the sorted, I throw them into my... Uh, uh, my uh, dry tumbler and then I tumble them dry and this is where things deviate from you know what I would say the the meticulousness of of new reloaders and you know once I'm, once I'm done with this and let's say these are you know all uh, all clean uh, I would then take that and what I used to do is take these rubber made containers what is this uh, uh, this is a one liter container and I would take this and dump my brass in until I'm ready to go for my uh, my reloading session. The difference being, when I first started, I was wondering, oh, do I do I want to have a container for you know cleaned, and then a container for you know uh, deprimed, and then a, t a, t a container for sized or slash belled or slash whatever. And I think as a re new reloader, folks tend to uh, maybe overdo it a little bit, uh, make it a little more complicated than it needs to be. Or I just got tired of going through all the processes and tried to simplify my life. So uh, I went from this kind of storage, uh, and then as I started reloading uh, additional calibers, uh, I went to a smaller version that took up less space. And this is what I would call my on-bench, ready-to-go. And I've moved to the, I'll call it my system, that uh, I, I don't do anything to brass before I reload it and have it ready for a session. So it'll be cleaned, and then it'll be dumped in a bin. And once it's in a bin, then if I want to reload... I will do a start to finish so I won't have brass that's you know just deprimed or just belled or uh, primed uh, ready to go I will take my session and go from clean to complete 
So there's no reason for me to have uh, additional bins. But over time, I've gotten lazy and have even moved away from this system. So I would say that this is where I store the calibers that I don't shoot very often. And I'll have these on the bench, uh, underneath the bench, and as I said, ready to go. But for what I do shoot more often, I've moved over to, well, I'll show you the, I'll, I'll show you the in-between. I moved to this type of container. And I picked these off, I don't remember who makes this. Uh, oh, berries, it's right there on the top. I did a video on this a couple years ago. Uh, I moved, and these are stackable, and I've got a few of these. And what I did was, um, when I cleaned my brass, I would just dump it in here. So, as I said, love the bins. So this, this would be a, a ready to go, ready to load, ready to start the loading process. So these are, and that is on the garage floor. This is uh, what I would call uh, ready to load. R Sometimes I used to put RTL, uh, you know, yellow post-its inside the bins to, to let me know, hey, it's ready to load. So nothing's been done to this other than cleaning. And this worked really well too. But I kind of got tired of going, you know, because I have these stacked, and I kind of got tired of going to where these are and picking them up and dumping brass into another bin and bringing the bin over to the bench. Let me find that errant one. So I then moved to what I would call ready to grab. And for my popular, when I say popular, there's only two calibers, nine millimeter and 45 ACP. So for my popular loads, I keep this next to the bench. So obviously there's more in here than I probably need. So maybe we should dump some of these because this is getting full, but not as full. All right, that's a little better, a little lighter too. All right, so back in storage or back in stack, this goes, and now this is a little lighter to move around the bench. But I'll show you my nine millimeter version if I can lift it, because it's heavy. Oh yeah, I should put that on a scale and find out how many pounds that is. So it's time to dump this nine into one of these. And what's funny is, you know, people talk about, well, why would you reload nine millimeter? Even today, as of, you know, last month, uh, I have people questioning the cost to reload nine millimeter. And Sometimes you have to look beyond the cost. Uh, in fact, I even commented on that new reloader. I'm like, uh, reloading will not save you any money. And I truly believe that. Uh, that's because you end up buying so much stuff to make your life better and easier, faster, more enjoyable, more whatever. Uh, but at the height of the cough back in mid-2020, 9mm was as high as $2 a round on the gouging sites. And uh, we're back down around 25 to 29 cents uh, shipped. And that's, uh, or let me rephrase that, 25 to 29 cents online. Some have free shipping, some don't. Then there's tax. Then depending on what state you live in, there's potentially an FFL fee. Uh, and some people couldn't comprehend, oh, you can't have ammo shipped to your front door? Mm, not, not anymore in the state that I live in. You have to have it sent to an FFL and then you have to pay the FFL fee, which for me is $30 per thousand, uh, plus your dollar background check uh, to be able to uh, purchase ammo. So that's why I reload 9mm. One, because I enjoy it. Two, because uh, since I can make it, it's readily available. And I can still make it for less than I can find it online. So it's a win all the way around. So my shooting uh, from a family perspective, depending on what we want to shoot, has not been crimped due to the cough. Uh, same with supplies, powders, and primers, which are running out, and uh, now it's time to pay the premium for that. But um, th this is how I keep my brass. And, uh, you know, when I want a session to reload, I go and I grab fistfuls, and then I throw it into um, my case feeder, my, my double alpha mini case feeder. And uh, that is working extremely well for me. 
So uh, my two stages of, uh, of brass system, my brass system is dirty, storage, completed round. So I don't, uh, I don't go through uh, infinite stages of uh, what stage a particular piece of brass is in uh, for reloading because I found that it's, it's just too hard to keep track of it. Just like I was thinking originally when I started, oh, you know, I'll have a bin for how many times a brass... Uh, cartridge has been, uh, brass case has been shot. You know, is it the first time? Is it the fifth time? Is it the tenth time? And even then I thought, nah, not going to do that. So from my point of view, straight wall brass, pistol brass, straight walled pistol brass, because there are some bottleneck pistol brass like the 5.7. Uh, but in general, straight walled pistol brass does not grow. So uh, there's no need to trim or worrying about, in my opinion, um, the, uh, the, uh, condition of the brass per se. Now there's two exceptions to that. One is primer pocket. When the primer pocket is so worn that the primer won't either seat. And by that, I mean, it'll go in, but it won't stay in, uh, seating as well as, um, uh, remaining, uh, in place. Uh, and then also if I pick up a round, or a case from the uh, from the range and the primers no longer in there I'll toss that because that just means that the condition of the pocket is is kind of done the other condition I look for is split case so you know I'll uh, I'll watch when I'm either reloading I don't catch it when I'm sorting uh, sometimes I do because of the sound a split case would make it's uh, the the tinny sound is different but uh, for for most purposes uh, I'll catch the uh, the split case when I'm actually reloading uh, I used to sort by small and large primer uh, because I hate small primer for 45 ACP. Uh, I'll throw those away, and uh, sometimes one of them will get by, and uh, as soon as I'm on the press and I prime on the press, and if I feel that uh, the primer won't seat, first thing I'll do is look to see if it's a small pocket or a small primer pocket, and usually is. So uh, there's not a lot I do to my brass. Uh, I don't have what I would call a system, or if you consider what I've just uh, discussed, a system. Uh, I think part of that is because you look for simplicity over time, especially when you're uh, doing repetitive tasks and there's no need to overcomplicate things. Uh, but again, it was just so uh, so interesting to see somebody else's brand new journey, their beginning of a journey to what reloading is about and uh, the level of excitement. And it got me thinking... Wow, how lazy have I become as a, as a reloader in terms of looking for uh, <laughs> simple shortcuts, uh, making things uh, easier for my particular uh, process. But uh, again, this is the beauty of reloading. To each their own. There's no such thing as wrong. There's just uh, how you're doing it and uh, how good you feel about what you're doing and how it fits into uh, to your process. So... That will be a wrap for the very first video recorded in 2023. Take care, folks.